All right, this is a video how to update your Jeppesen charts on the Avidyne EXC5000, which is commonly known as the MFD for the Integra system. It's on a 2003 Cirrus SR22. So first things first, what we do is we keep a dedicated uh, USB uh, thumb drive here that's labeled specifically for the charts and formatted properly. There is a specific way you have to have it formatted. Those instructions are on uh, Avidyne's site. I'll try to link those in the video. So all you do is you put your thumb drive on in, turn on your uh, battery power, and then your uh, avionics. And we're just gonna wait for this to go ahead and uh, fire it up here. There we go, light's coming up. You notice that the uh, thumb drive, this one has a light on it, which is really good, you know, when it's uh, data's being pulled on it, being used. All right, then we're going to see the screen pop up in a second. Now what I do, I'm plugged into uh, external power, but oftentimes what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and turn off, if I'm not on external power, I'll go and turn off my uh, IFDs here. These are IFD 440s, We've got dual IFD 440s in this aircraft. You know, just a way to go ahead and save a little bit of power and whatnot. Also, that way I don't have to hear the radio going over. All right, so here we go. We got the CMAX data update. It says if you choose to uh, proceed, update will be performed as followed. So this is a revision starting for uh, April 29th. There we go, we're gonna click proceed. And there we go. And we're just gonna sit here. Now the charts do take a little while to upload. I'll let them go through. At the uh, system will tell us everything that's occurring and what's happening and, and uh, whatnot. And then it'll give us uh, basically a, um, you know all clear uh, after it's uh, installed, saying if there's any errors or not. Thank goodness we've never had any errors on this. They all seem to update uh, fairly uh, effectively and never had any issues. Let's go and watch this. Now what's really cool about this while it's doing this is that uh, this also has engine logs. So the engine logs overwrite themselves every 500 hours. So what we do is that every 500 hours, we put a thumb drive in. We have a separate thumb drive that's labeled. Uh, we put on in here and we download those engine logs. So that way we always have all the engine log uh, data. Also, I'll note that uh, when you're updating the uh, nav uh, and terrain databases in the uh, MFD for the Avidine system, uh, that has to be done via a separate thumb drive. You cannot use the same thumb drive for your charts as you are using for your navigation terrain databases. Also, another thing to note is that when you have your subscription through Jeppesen, like if you have uh, Avidine, say, an IFD or 440, you download the obstacle database and the nav and the nav databases uh, separately. You can put them on the same thumb drive, but they're two different downloads. Whereas the nav database and the obstacle database, sorry, I was saying terrain earlier, I meant obstacle. For the uh, nav and obstacle database for the uh, Avidine EXC 5000 uh, MFD, um, those are all uh, as lo loaded as just one download. So you're not gonna see a separate file for obstacles and a separate file for nav. So it all just comes as one on in there. Uh, so you load that onto your thumb drive. Uh, and of course, again, it has to be specifically formatted uh, for this particular unit uh, or, or for this type. And also when you're doing charts, don't forget that you need to go and grab your, uh, um, your, your key code that needs to be put on in there as well. And you get your key code from uh, when, uh, your, the Avidine site, and uh, uh, then you know, obviously, you're able to go and download everything on there and input it into your Jefferson account. So, just a couple of things, but once you do it once, it's all set and taken care of. I'm gonna keep the video running. I know this might seem a little long, but this way you have an idea as far as how long does it really take to go and do one of these uploads or down uh, or updates. This is good to know because if you're sitting at an airport, especially if you've been running your battery for a while and you're not plugged into external power or anything like that. It's good to know about how long it's going to take uh, before you start, you know, eating into based on that battery time if you're already starting off on a battery that wasn't fully charged or, or whatnot. So we're about halfway there now, still coming along. Like I said, the Jeppesen charts are the uh, is the longest uh, update that we found in the uh, doing that Avidine system. If we were doing the navigation obstacle uh, update in here, um, this thing would already be um, would have already been done uh, by now. But get a little bit closer on in there. Really curious to see with Avidyne's new Vantage system, we're on the uh, list to go and uh, get that upgrade in here once they uh, go ahead and release it. Uh, uh, we're assuming that the updates will be real similar to how it is on the IFD 440s. You know, they use 
you know, much more modern uh, architecture. You can use a, any standard uh, thumb drive, don't need any crazy formatting. You just pop it in and go and updates nice and quick and uh, fast on in there. So hopefully with Vantage, we'll see some uh, additional benefits on in there, not just having a larger, uh, I believe a 12 inch uh, displays on in there and very high, uh, ultra high resolution but also just the processing speed and uh, having a dual AHAR. So we're super excited for once that comes on out, uh, so we can go ahead and get that. We are shooting this video around April of 2022. So just about a week or so ago, Avidyne did their webinar on the new Vantage system. So if you're interested in Vantage, check that webinar out. I'm sure you can go and get that on Avidyne site and I have one also coming up actually tomorrow on the new uh, software update uh, that they have uh, coming on out as well. Uh, Two, which will be nice, um, ahead of that uh, for the ill effect the IFD 440s and 540s and 550s. Okay, we're getting a little bit closer here. So it still takes a while. It's old school N Windows NT technology, but I'll tell you what, we've been really happy with the system. We haven't had any issues with it. It works. Yeah, does it have all the latest bells and whistles that we see on the new systems? No, but it is a very, very capable uh, IFR flying machine. Take this thing IMC frequently and uh, I feel very confident, safe, and competent with it. Uh, once you get the flow down on the system, it's very easy. Um, you know, we got the XM weather and the uh, uh, traffic avoidance system on this, which is nice. And then I'm coming from my IFD 440s down here. I have an ADSB uh, data, so I can uh, send that to my iPad. So if I want to cross-reference against, you know, ADSB traffic coming on in or FISB weather data against what XM is telling me or what my train or traffic avoidance system is telling me from um, the Skywatch system. It's nice to be able to have those uh, comparisons on in there. Sometimes we'll see them picking up uh, aircraft, maybe on the uh, traffic avoidance system. Uh, we'll see that we don't see on ADSB or vice versa. So when you're in really busy airspace, like where this aircraft is based in a really busy area in the uh, you know Los Angeles area, um, you know it's nice to be able to have that added layer on in there. Plus, you never know if something's going to go sideways. And it's really nice is if you do have. Uh, you know, in this aircraft, let's say the MFE, MFD goes down and, you know, you lost your charts. We have Jepson, obviously, charts on this, you know, and um, you're using those or something of that nature. Uh, your autopilot's not going to die on you. Uh, you know, you won't have your pretty moving map up top, but you still got everything lined up on your uh, IFD 440. Okay, here we are. It's a C-Max update completed with no errors. That's what we want. Press any key to continue. It's restarting, ejecting data loader, disconnect data loader from MFD, which I just uh, did, and, and then press any key to restart system. Go and put the little cover back on here nicely. There you go. And we just let this go ahead and uh, load back up. One thing I'll throw out there, I'll do a separate video for when you update the obstacle navigation databases, is it does not ask you to eject the data loader, which is the fancy way of saying your USB thumb drive. Uh, so what I always do, I always let it go and uh, do its reboot and then I uh, turn off the system or I, I do the install press buttons and then it, it'll, it'll load then I turn off the system then I pull my data loader out instead of pulling it out when the system might be uh, on. Now it's important we're going to let this uh, bad boy go and warm up here because I want to make sure I'm not having any issues with my MFD make sure everything works exactly as it's supposed to and uh, just give it a minute here there we go now it's popping on initializing system we're going to look for the dates look at that Valid April 29th through May uh, 12th. That was the update that we just did. So we know our charts are updated on in there. It's now gonna go ahead and uh, take a look at the obstacle and uh, navigation databases. So we wanna verify those. There we go, those are all good. Those are good through May uh, 19th on the uh, nav data. Obstacles are good through May 18th. There you go, and then you can press any key to continue. So what I typically do, and I'm not sure if there's a uh, way it's better or not or if this even matters but i just try to keep all my flows and everything i do comes aviation very consistent so and we got the really neat fuel analyzer here absolutely awesome so i just go ahead and click through the buttons get it set up and then turn everything off and that's all we got to do to update our charts